Hi there, welcome back. This is going to be a very short video just to experiment something here and um, it has to do with the Magic Eye tube on this uh, latest restoration I'm busy with, the uh, Low Opta Rhine Pill 5717W and you may be able to see it or not. I've got this thing on FM which we've just got working by the way and the Magic Eye is very 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 dull and uh, I'm not even sure that you can see anything there. At the moment it's tuned in and I'm going to try and change the um, the lighting on the camera. See if you can sort of see that. Now if I tune away you can see it moves. But two things are evident here. One is you can see as the um, the green hue moves back, moves away, it's moving towards the center and it creates a green line and then it moves away and it creates sort of a black hollow until it reaches sort of another station. Now what we find here is this thing is uh, the phosphorus layer on this thing has really really burned through. It's an EM84, it's a very common um, magic eye tube. It's not one of the most expensive ones around but um, I would like to try something and that is, and I've done this before, I've never filmed it, and that is to try and increase the uh, anode voltage or the target voltage, I think you'd call it in this case, on this tube to see if the, uh, the glow becomes more visible. Now that is a trick that a lot of people have used and it seems to work for a short while. These tubes are, this tube is being fed by the B2 plus of the radio which is about 200 volts and we can check that. I've got the um, multimeter connected to the chassis and I'm going to measure where the supply voltage comes in which is just over there. It's getting 208 volts. Uh, then there's a resistor and there's the anode of the other, um, the other, well the, the triode within which is 126 volts. So there's a drop from the B plus or B2 plus here. And it drops through that resistor, which I believe is 470 ohms, as uh, 470 kilo ohms, and it goes to here. And the current draw through that drops about 70, 80 volts. So the maximum voltage we have here is 208 volts. What happens if I increase that? Well, according to what the schematic says, that thing can go as high as 300 volts and work quite happily. Well, I don't have 300 volts on this radio, but I do have a higher voltage. I've actually got the B plus over here is 241 volts. So I've got another, well, 30 something volts to play with. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to connect temporarily from that B plus to there. I have to remove that connection. That is the supply. And I'm going to connect it to there and see if we notice any difference. Now, whatever difference it does make, it's going to be temporary because the uh, phosphor, phosphorus layer on here is really pretty burnt. And this one is worse than most. This one isn't just something that you see very dim. You actually see a black section on there that's sort of burnt out. It's, uh, it, it's sort of become almost non-existent, the phosphor layer on there which tells me, uh, and this I can tell when I tune away, you can't really see that there, but it's created sort of a dark shadow rectangle here where the, um, where the signal has sort of stepped back, where the phosphorus glow has stepped back. So it tells me that this thing is actually pretty much burnt, but I want to try it anyway and see what we get. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to desolder that point move it away and I'm going to connect a jumper from there to there and see if it makes any difference. Well it actually has made a slight difference. You can actually see it move now. Not much, admittedly not much. If I um, change the lighting, it's become slightly better ever so slightly better, but not enough to warrant messing around with this. So in this case, I'll probably just replace the tube. These tubes aren't as expensive as some of the other ones. 
some of the other magic eyes. Some of them are incredibly expensive. But this just shows that uh, another 40 volts does make a difference. And I'm sure that if this uh, tube was not as far gone as this one actually is, I have a feeling that it would have made it worthwhile. So yeah, let's uh, try something else. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an external supply to this, a high voltage supply. This is actually the capacitance uh, leakage tester that I've built and designed, and there's a link above if you're interested. And it allows me to go up to about 330 volts on there. Admittedly, this thing can only supply a very small amount of current because it's usually used for reforming capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, or testing capacitor leakage. So very, very small current requirements. And actually, I don't know how much current this thing draws, but I presume it's very small and we'll be able to stop it anyway. There's a limiting function in there to about, uh, well, I believe it's 30 milliamps. But I'm going to switch it on and I'll be increasing this voltage so that we see whether that makes any difference and at what point it actually becomes visible, if at all. So what I've got is I've got the negative connected to the chassis and I've got the positive connected to the supply pin. So let's get this thing going. At the moment, it's just on 100 volts. And it's drawing about, it's a 10 milliamp scale, so it's drawing about 2 milliamps, sorry, 0.2 milliamps, let's go to 1 milliamp scale, 0.4 milliamps. I've got it tuned. So let's see what happens when I increase this. I think I'll put this on the 10 milliamp scale just to be safe. There's 150 volts. It's uh, drawing 1 milliamp. And Actually, what's happened is this thing has crept closer. So the voltage on the anode determines just how much deflection you'll get from the signal, but that's not what I'm interested in. So I'm going to increase this to 200 volts. And that's what it looked like, 200 volts. Now, if I increase it further, and I'll tell you where I am, 220, 250, It's now at 300 volts. And it's drawing 2 milliamps. So it has made a slight, slight difference. I'm going to put this uh, to the maximum, which is 330. And you can actually see that it's made a difference. Now, this is a moot point because I don't have 330 volts on this radio that I could uh, divert to there and spare 2 milliamps. But it does show that it does make a difference. Now, how long this would last, I'm not sure. And I'm not advocating doing this. This is more an experiment. I got a hell of a lot of flack when I um, did a video on reforming capacitors. People believe you should just swap them out and not bother reforming because they might go bad. Well, yeah, I guess that could happen with just about any part that you decide on whether to restore or throw away. I suppose you could look at the whole radio and, and make the same... Uh, decision, but uh, we restore them after all. But anyway, this is just a quick uh, show as to where it is. And I'm, and I'm going to drop it down to 220 again and show you a 200. And you can clearly see the difference. See that? That's 330. That is 200. 330. Now, with the uh, higher target voltage there, you'd probably need to change the, the um, amplitude of the signal that's driving the deviation. In other words, you would have to re-bias this effectively, if that's what you can call it, so that you can get this thing closing more or less. You see, it's never closing to a maximum, but I'm not sure that this is the strongest signal that you can get. So it does sort of stay open a bit, but you can clearly see the difference. And if we do this again, there's 330 volts, there's 200. So, 
pretty waste, pretty useless experiment. But uh, one always uh, learns something and then you test it and you check whether it makes sense. This does make sense. There's a big, big write-up on, um, on the net about how this thing works. That's what we're looking at now, 330 volts, 2.2 milliamps or so. That's the maximum that this thing will go to at the moment. And I'm quite happy with that. I don't ever test capacitors above this uh, value. I know the capacitors I test are usually, you know, 450 volts and some of the uh, film ones are 630, even 1000 volts. But if they're working at 330, they're good enough for me. And the reason I didn't go much higher is because all the... Um, Components in this thing would have to change to become tolerant of higher voltages, and I just didn't need to do that. So basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit a new EM84. Whether, whether it's new or new, it's actually new old stock, this thing looks like it hasn't ever been used. And we should get a great result. But the experiment was worth it. And I'm sure I'm not going to give up on this because I know there are some tubes, some magic eye tubes that I've used in the past that were just a little bit dim and didn't have the uh, the shadowing on there on the screen, on the phosphorus screen. And I'm sure that those could have been revived at least for a while because these things do burn out after some time. I think these tubes were rated for about a thousand hours or so. So it's not something that's permanent. Whatever is burning is going to keep burning the phosphorus. And so sooner or later, you're going to have to swap it. But these are becoming very, very rare. Not so much the M84, but some of the other magic eyes. And anything one can do to try and revive them and just make them last a little bit longer is worthwhile, in my opinion. And this is what a new magic eye looks like. Very, very bright. I've actually uh, dimmed the lighting. Here's the maximum. This thing is really, really bright. Looks really good. There we are, new magic eye. And the minute I release the um, lighting adjustment on the camera, it just goes very, very bright because it is. I'm not sure whether I'm going to leave that one there or put in a used one. But so far, um, this thing's working perfectly. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and um, I'll see you back soon. And if you like this, please share, subscribe, like, all that stuff. And if you want to support the channel, you can go to Patreon as well. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.